Hello, it's Lewis, and welcome back to that haunted show. I hope everyone is doing well and having a great week. Well, the week's only just begun. I'm recording this on Monday, but if you're listening later on, have a great week. I hope it's great. Have a good weekend, whatever. But it's nearly Halloween. It is nearly officially the spookiest day of the year. So I'm hyped. I I'm hyped for many reasons. Partly because I love Halloween, and partly because I'm finally getting my cat on Halloween. Yeah, I'm finally getting a little pumpkin. Like, I am really excited. It's, yeah, it just seems this month is now just dragging. I just can't wait. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm beyond excited. We've been looking at, like, loads of little toys and beds and stuff like that, even though. I, yeah, I haven't got the first clue. Like, my girlfriend's looking at all the serious side of it, at the whole, like, medical insurance and stuff like that, and pet insurance. And I don't even know the half of it. I just want to buy cute toys and play with it because it's adorable. <laughs> yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. And there's been a few changes. Uh, recently with the last episode, the first Ghost Stories episode, we had a bit of difficulty. I've been changing uh, podcast distributor. And with that, there's been a few complications. I didn't really know what I was doing and all that. I think we're getting over the worst of it, as far as I'm aware. Uh, The main thing was, obviously, we had to redirect the RSS feed, and I had no idea what to do. (laughs) I'll I'll be honest with you, I had no idea. Podcasting is all still new to me, and I'm still learning. There's so much to it, and I'm never going to get anywhere near knowing it all, (laughs) pretty much. Yeah, we've moved over to uh, Buzzsprout now. So basically, Buzzsprout, I looked at it, I've, I've looked at all the reviews and everything, and they're so far my experience with them has been amazing like i've spoken to the customer service a few times just making sure the transitions all worked and everything like that and yeah like literally i'll email them and they will reply like the three or four times i've emailed them they've replied in like 20 minutes so yeah uh, i can safely say buzzsprout they've definitely they're definitely doing the right stuff here they've got my praise (laughs) they're they're really good and not to say that Anchor wasn't good. I did like Anchor, but we are we are doing quite well. And we kind of, I don't know, outgrown Anchor a bit. It didn't do the things that I wanted it to actually do. So with Buzzsprout, it does a lot more. Of course, you're paying for it. So you're going to get a lot more different features and stuff like that. So it kind of works out pretty well. And regardless, I'm, I'm quite happy with how it's going, how the show's going. And yeah, so you should be able to find me on all the usual places if you click the link in the instagram bio it will take you uh to my boss route page and on that page you'll have all the different directories you listen to it whether it's on spotify apple google podcasts we're on stitcher we're on literally everywhere right <laughs> let me just have a look because it is ridiculous right i'm on it right now so <laughs> we are on apple Podcasts, spotify google Podcasts, overcast stitcher podcast addict pocket cast castro cast box pod chaser deezer listen notes player fm or you can just listen to our rss feed so yeah it's going really well i'm looking at the page right now i'm pretty happy with it all so the good thing about uh, Buzzsprout is if you click on the home page you've got links to the Facebook page which is facebook.com forward slash that haunted show uh, I, I don't, haven't actually set it up properly but if you guys want to follow there or get in contact there that'd be great maybe I'll put more effort into it it's just mainly I like I love Instagram and that's mainly where I do any kind of social outlets and kind of market the podcast and put it out there uh, but we've also got our Twitter link in there, the Instagram link, as well as links to the actual show. Also, a new feature is a new feature is we have a donation page now, which is just through Cash App, and there's no obligation. I'm not asking you for donations or anything like that. But it it this is a hobby of mine. Uh, I'm paying out for this distributor, paying out for mics, editing software, and stuff like that. And now we're actually getting quite a few listens in and stuff like that. I have loads of plans for the future. I'm in some <laughs> like really serious talks at the moment, which is, yeah, they've kind of come out of the blue. I'm definitely really excited. I didn't expect it to happen like this. I kind of, I, I'm not going to give away too much, but a few people have reached out to me and I've kind of reached out to them and uh, 
yeah, we're in talks and hopefully I'll be doing a show with another certain show. I won't name drop them just in case it all falls through and I look like an idiot. <laughs> I am definitely very excited. It is, yeah, I'm really hyped. And also, uh, another person has reached out as well, which is amazing. And this one is a potential to record in a certain location. Now, I'm not going to give away too much, but this location looks amazing. I am, yeah, I can't believe like how I've never even thought of this or recording in some different places because currently I'm just recording at my desk. It's boring. It's not the best sound, but we're doing our best. We've got where well, I've been buying more equipment and stuff like that. So hopefully you guys notice everything and it sounds a bit better and all that. But like I said, there's no obligation to donate or anything like that. But if you'd like to help out the show, it will all go to the show's fund, which will be for... Uh, any trips or any kind of upgrades that we need so if I need a better mic or something like that or if anything happens it just kind of covers that and yeah it, it would be great if you did but honestly there's no pressure I'm I'm not expecting it this is a hobby for me so I yeah <laughs> I, I don't know what to say here like I listen to so many podcasts and stuff like that where they've got like patreons with different tiers and stuff like that I'm like my life is not that exciting. I don't even know what more would you want. Like, <laughs> yeah, uh, like tier one, our release, the unedited version, which is me rambling for probably God knows how long <laughs> with like a thousand mistakes because that's pretty much what we do every time we record. Like the amount of times I make mistakes or end up just getting in a stupid, ridiculous kind of tongue twister. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. Or like the Bloody Mary episode where I had to say it countless times with a mirror parallel to me. That was fun because I was definitely freaking out there and I had to cut a lot because there was uh, some definitely some not safe for work words said. <laughs> and well, that's the thing as well. I'm not sure about this podcast anymore because the last episode, the Ghost Stories episode, it did have a few choice words in there which were in the stories. Not just me, not just my own choices. So I have had to label that one as explicit. So I don't know if this is going to be kind of like, I, I don't want to say explicit because it's not. I may say a few certain words or something like that, but I will have to rate it as explicit. Of course, we are trying to keep this family friendly and all that. So there's not going to be a lot or anything like that. But of course, I've got to state it if any children, not that children probably should be listening to this because you're going to have some serious nightmares. But yeah, so there will be an explicit warning on all the shows. So just, just so you can see and so you're aware. Uh, aside from that, yeah, it's everything's going good. Uh, the the podcast is doing really well. Like I said, I'm on the page now. The new layout's really good. Uh, the the page is in my Instagram bio. It's thathauntedshow.buzzsprout.com. Or yeah, like I said, just click on my Instagram bio and it'll take you straight there. The artwork's amazing. Everyone seems to love it. And uh, yeah, the the Wendigo episode especially went down really well. Uh, yeah, usually I, I get a fair few plays like when it first comes out, but in the first week I got like 50 plays on that Wendigo, which I know 50 doesn't sound like a lot, but to me that that's a lot. Like <laughs> for, for weeks I was lucky if I got like four episodes up to 50 plays. So yeah, you guys really dig that episode. So thanks again for listening. It's It's really motivational to kind of know you guys are listening instead of having that feeling where you're just rambling into a mic and all that. So yeah it, it's great honestly i'm enjoying what i'm doing and uh yeah like i've said countless times this is my passion it's i love the paranormal i love anything spooky and this is just a hobby for me but it's great to know that you guys are enjoying it and of course some of you are talking to me on the instagram getting in contact and all that and it's great like i'm hearing some really traumatizing stories but you guys have definitely had some scary experiences which kind of put mine to shame like some people out there are really living with some serious stuff which kind of leads me on to this episode like this episode is going to be yeah this episode is going to be haunted items now so this kind of inspired me today uh i saw something on instagram um where someone was getting a certain painting which looked very creepy and it kind of got me thinking about yeah haunted items and objects because i've kind of covered like the residual haunts or haunted places and stuff like that and kind of spiritual activity 
but I've never kind of covered actual uh, actual haunted objects. So yeah, I'm gonna. I've found uh, basically I've got on this website. Uh, there's an archive of people's own stories and stuff like that. And yeah, it's this is all categorized by different kind of phenomena and stuff like that. And there's a haunted items category, which is literally ideal. I was searching for something like this and then this popped up. It's almost like it's fate. So this first story is actually, it's, oh, it's from the UK. So who knows? I mean, the UK is tiny. It could even be near me. Who knows? Because definitely where I live, I mean, especially where I live, it's a uh, really old village in Surrey and yeah there's definitely some weird things going on around here <laughs> and there's yeah 100% I mean the UK is scary man it's old there's so much history and stuff like that and a lot of stories like the main kind of Hollywood stories and stuff like that they all kind of be like haunted houses in America or something like that but when you kind of look into terms of it it's the UK has got some serious history going back like hundreds of years and then that like the uk has got nothing on terms of like greece or like the, the middle east even like they must have some serious kind of phenomena coming out of there i'll have to do some research on them because that will definitely be something i want to look at because yeah their history goes back to like well i mean the middle east it even goes back to like if you believe it like jesus time <laughs> jesus times and like christianity I don't know, like BC and shit. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're, let's, yeah, I'm, I'm getting lost. So let's get into the first story. Like I said, this one's coming out of the UK. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if they want me to read names, but it's by Zeppelin Chris. Uh, and it goes like this. I get it. Zeppelin Chris goes like this. Ah, smooth. <laughs> so... A little while ago, I wrote a story about a farm going up for auction in Milton Keynes in the UK. I titled the story, Old Barns Scares My Friend and I. During that story, I talked about rescuing with hope of restoring an old truck left on the farm behind the barn. Soon mentioning the truck, now restored, had some interesting energies and it felt like the old owner may be accompanying me on my trip and a couple of fellow site members asked if I'd write about it. Happy to oblige, here is the story you asked for, and thank you all for reading the original. I appreciate your great comments. Okay, so that was just an introduction, alright. So the story starts now. Back in the summer of 2017, where the story mentions, an auction off a farm brought us to meet my new truck. It had been housed in a kind of open lean-to garage, only a little bit bigger than it was. It turned out after much work getting it moving under its own power, the pickup day quickly ended. It had been housed in a kind of open lean-to garage, only a little bit bigger than it was. It turned out after much work to get it moved under its own power, the pickup day quickly ended and the old girl had no starter. Sorry, this, uh, it's not kind of composed the best. I'm kind of trying to read it out and make sense of it as I go. So apologies again. Obviously judging by the dirt covering the tarps that covered the truck, it had been a while since the truck had gone underwear, anywhere under its own power and it had likely had the faulty starter motor removed when it had been retired to rot in the lean-to garage. My friend listed in their last story, and I along with my partner, love of my life and business partner, M, okay, took two hours getting this specialised truck hauler to toll the poor old lass out of her semi-permanent grave. Forgive me if you were in, under any impression that this was a huge semi. I did tell you to, I'm a former truck driver now running an antiques business and restoration centre. It's not. Original birth certificate of sorts states that she was a 1950s Bedford truck with an enclosed van like back. Perfect, as I first saw it. Thinking I could restore it and use it to haul antiques we buy at auction and restore for our business. What's a little more impressive than an antique sort of truck getting real antiques and taking them to a new home, right? That's what I planned anyway. The truck was in good condition for sitting as license plates told us that she had been registered in the year 1984, when I was 11. Mostly, it was basic surface rust, and of course she needed the usual tyres, brakes, new starter, etc. Physically, the body was sold as the floor wells, and the back van floor only had two small rust holes. Very good for a 60 plus year work old, old work truck. The back that had strands of hay and twine probably saved it from extra rot. It was all very dry. It took a year and two months to get the truck restored and roadworthy certificated. As of September 2018, our 1950s Bedford truck was now repainted 
and re-hit the road for the first time in 34 years. Much to all our joy, the truck drove that she was new, pretty much was by the end, and handled amazing for a truck of her age. The truck now named Linda took to like a new job, like a duck to water. Once white and blue, we repainted the truck black with teal and silver, the colours of our business signs and cards. It looked like a real eye catcher and turned heads whenever we drove. My partner and I did runs nearly every weekend to local auctions and estate sales, transporting our purchases in the van I'd wanted to do without hassle. And it was a whole lot better than my old car hauling a dirty old trailer. I first noticed a strange feeling about the truck when it neared Christmas 2018. The workload had got extra busy and we had been up to four trips a week at one stage. Everyone wants to do a clean out before Christmas I guess. M had to work this particular day so I made the trip with my dog, an elderly husky Labrador called Boss after Bruce Springsteen to keep me company. Now Boss was 10 at the time and she had limited hearing but fairly good sight. Yes she's still alive and just turned 13. Oh good. That, I probably wouldn't read this if the dog died. <laughs> I love dogs man. He usually travelled with me fine. He loves cars and trucks and as a pup he travelled with me often as I drive trucks. He's a medium sized dog and looks more like a husky than a labrador. But he has a labrador appetite and softer features. He's an incredibly friendly dog and is very gentle. Loves attentions and pats and food most of all. This day I had to get up extra early. I called boss as usual and he came running. Well, a fastish waddle. And he saw me loading my stuff in the truck and started wagging his tail. Mum was going at him. Yay. He gets within six foot of the truck and hits the brakes and just sits down. I turned around to see him just staring into the empty cab as I came across from the back of the truck. Seeing him sitting there, I yelled, Boss, are you coming or not? Which seemed to snap him out of this staring state looking at the cab and he gets up and comes over like nothing happened. I'm thinking he's just a silly old dog and didn't worry about it at all. He happily let me help him up into the truck without any fuss. This would be the first of the strange events with the old Bedford truck that made me wonder. Did its old owner make trips with me? Was he happy I restored his old truck? I'd like to think he is. And here's some of the things that have happened since then which makes me think I'm not always travelling alone when M isn't with me. So, A26 layaway. About 2am, January 10th, 2019. On the way home from another estate auction, tired, I lay across the bench seat with my pillows and quilt. I'd regularly got used to doing this as the seat was quite comfortable and I was far too tired to drive home. I wake up to the sounds of what seems to be a rattling loudly in the back of the van. Great, I think a damn rat or something is in the stuff that I'd picked up, which wouldn't be the first time I tell you. So I get up and I hear something in the cab say, shh, don't go out there. No one but me is in the cab and I jumped. Again, something says, shh, don't go out there. I think it must be a warning and I heed it. I've been around ghosts since I was little, so I know when something is trying to help. The spirit didn't seem scary at all, it seemed worried about my safety and the energy was very calm. A little while later the rattling stopped and at some point after it stopped I went back to sleep. Now in the morning I go to check the back of the van to see if it was rats. And there is these weird marks around the van and prints on the ground that weren't human. There were no rats though thankfully. But later research states that A26 is a very haunted road. Roman soldiers ghosts, black shark sightings, ghost vehicles and ghost hitchhikers. Now I don't know what was out there that night and frankly when I saw the morning frost makes me hope I never do. I don't know what was out there that night. Whatever was in the cab stopped whatever was outside getting to me, locked van or not. Something wanted in and someone helped me so it wouldn't. Many trucks have stopped in layway, layways, layways, layways? I'm not quite sure what it is. Like. I always call them laybys. Alright, so uh, many trucks have stopped in laybys in this area and have stated hearing scratching, banging, something knocking on doors. Morning always shows ground with frost and strange marks, clearly not human. I've travelled that road hundreds of times driving trucks in my car, stayed at hotels mostly. Once at a layby, I saw what looked like another car, very old but in good condition, when I pulled in. When I parked and got out to stretch my legs, the car just wasn't there anymore and the only way for it to go was to come past me as I was at the only entry and exit to the lay-by and it sure as hell didn't do that. Rockford Tyne Lane near Sally on the Hill overpass 11pm or thereabout. Sally on the Hill is a famous hunting spot on the road where a woman was killed in a car accident in the 1960s. She's said to haunt the area but it's harmless and just wants a ride home. 
The Rockford Tyne Lane is a well-known rest and lay-by for drivers. Its dead end backs up to an old unused road that was there before the freeway was built in 1950. I'm resting my head for the night and I hear what sounds like a huge crunch and a smash of glass. Great. I think some idiots had a car accident but I couldn't hear an engine or people. I go to get up to see if anyone needs help and what feels like a soft touch on my hand or my arm gently pushed me back down. I know I wasn't dreaming, I was playing on my phone waiting to be tired enough to sleep. I go to get up again and something carefully pushed me back down. Taking it as a warning, I laid back down and eventually went back to sleep. Next morning, no sign of car accidents, no signs of broken glass, no damage to nearby roads, signs or trees. I walked around and looked hard. Whatever I heard wasn't corporal formed. Scared the hell out of me. Another time driving through a little village in Yorkshire, I had to swerve to avoid a car stopped that was broken down in the middle of the road. I thought I was going to hit a roadside sign when I felt the steering wheel in my hands quickly turn stronger than I could do it. Remember the old truck had no power steering. This spirit again saved me from what was no doubt a nasty possible serious injury and some serious van damage by making sure the van avoided the signpost. I'm five foot tall and a seven stone female. I couldn't have hauled that wheel that quickly and strongly. If I made a bet, something was definitely looking out for me. Other things too that are strange. I had a busted lock that in no way could have held the van back door shut, held the doors shut on bumpy roads for four hours. Sorry, this, yeah, it, this story isn't making the best sense. I'm just <laughs> trying to read it as it is, so. Uh, so basically she's saying, they had a busted lock which couldn't have held the door shut but it always did so when i stopped for lunch and found the damage to the latch that had clearly been there a while got home and found out it was a broken clasp on the driveway it had broken off since the same day i left home the day before whatever held the door shut saved us losing a lot of valuable antiques that weekend someone was definitely watching over me friends have borrowed the van to move house and had a tire blow out something or someone stopped him losing control of the van going over 70 on the freeway at the time. He felt the steering wheel and the hands move better and quicker than he could do it. It no doubt also saved his life and stopped what could have been a nasty wreck. Cold nights, no heater, until I got one installed. The van was never cold, not even in the worst raining nights. Too many other things to name, too strange to be a coincidence. Maybe I think someone is happy that I restored this truck. I'm not going to complain, they're great company and can stick around however long they like. Looking at it, it's... It's definitely something's there. Maybe, it, like you said, it could be someone looking over there happy you've kind of restored your car. Uh, restored the van, sorry. And are actually loving it and taking care of it and using it daily. So maybe they are looking out for you. Or maybe it could be some kind of guardian spirit. I, I, I don't want to say guardian angel because then it leads on to like the whole kind of religion and stuff like that. And that's a whole episode in its own right. Like, a guardian spirit is definitely a thing. And there's a lot of stories and phenomena out there of these guardian spirits of people being able to do the craziest things under strenuous situations and stuff like that. It's, it's ridiculous what can actually happen. And this sounds like something is definitely looking out for you because in every instance, it seems like they have protected you. Not so much as, uh, not so much as like being a spirit and being present and stuff like that. It seems to have no negative effect and only comes into play when it's potentially saving your life. So consider yourself very lucky there. You seem to definitely have some kind of guardian spirit there. So yeah, don't get rid of the truck. Look after it and definitely don't break it because he might get mad. <laughs> but oh yeah, also another interesting thing is it's definitely linked to the truck. Like you said, how you've let friends borrow it and stuff like that. And the phenomena happens with them as well. So I'd definitely say... 100% linked to the truck and yeah maybe it's a previous owner who, who knows but it was definitely an interesting story I really liked it and of course being in the UK is always nice because I actually know these places and stuff like that you can kind of make a little image in your mind so let me just have a look through some more this could be a good one yeah here we, yeah here we go so this one is called can a mirror serve as a portal? Now, this is coming from India. Um, and this is by good-ghosts. I don't know if I can very conveniently blame the mirror for my own experience, but this is what happened. 
A few days have passed since my experience and I waited to see if what happened will repeat, but thankfully it did not. So I'm not sure whether what I experienced was paranormal or not. I and my now six-year-old son and my husband sleep together in the master bedroom of our house. There is a washroom in my room and I've placed the wardrobe to the wall of the washroom. It's got a full-size mirror, lengthwise, on it which almost reaches out to the foot of the wardrobe. My bed is placed near to the wardrobe and my son sleeps near the wall. I sleep in the centre and my husband sleeps on the edge. That way my head is exactly a foot and a half away from the mirror. In case I couldn't explain the setting that well, my apologies. One night, not so late, when we were all sleeping, we had been sleeping for a few minutes since I always look at the time before going to bed, something came and stood at my head. I couldn't feel it moving from here to there, I just felt as if it came out of the mirror, and its hands, it, well, they felt that way, from my shoulders to my wrists. I, I felt like it kind of wanted to pin me down, and, I was, and it was leaning over me, it was trying to harm me. It wasn't anything sexual, I could feel it just wanted to harm me and I struggled to grab its hands which were on my wrists. I didn't open my eyes, actually I couldn't open them, but I struggled to stop it from overpowering me. After a few moments, I couldn't count in seconds or minutes, it went away with a whoosh. I mean I couldn't feel it moving in the room, it went away the same way it appeared. Finally I could open my eyes and still pinned on the bed. I stared at the ceiling, I only moved my eyes and saw my husband fast asleep and my child was safe as well. I was more concerned about my son in the past as he was the one to experience all the paranormal stuff and I couldn't feel a thing. When I was able to move, I rolled towards my son and put my hand on him to check if he was okay. He was fine without any impact. My heart kept thumping the whole time. I was, I was still scared, but somehow I managed to take a look at the mirror. It was okay as well, but for some reason I couldn't stop associating the incident to the mirror. It feels as if it came out from the mirror and it went back the same way. I say it as I couldn't feel if it was a male or female or animal, but something definitely came out. For a few more nights I slept the same way, but couldn't feel a thing. Jeez, that's, yeah, that's quite an experience. Um, the only thing I can kind of say about that experience is how you felt like you couldn't open your eyes or anything like that, that seems more in line with sleep paralysis. Now, sleep paralysis is definitely a thing. Hundreds of thousands of people experience sleep paralysis every day. It's, it's a serious condition, which is just terrifying. Uh, like I said, even in the last episode, the, one of the guys who works with me experiences this that all the time. There's many different ways of experiencing it and things that can happen. But uh, a common reoccurring theme is that you get this kind of, they, they call it the sleep paralysis demon. Now this is basically a form of negative energy which your mind kind of conjures up the darkest, deepest recesses of your mind and it kind of creates that and of course it's just working off fear. Now if you were pinned down, felt like you couldn't move, it could very well be the sleep paralysis demon. It could be you just couldn't move yourself. I know it did say like it felt like the hands were on your wrists and stuff like that. But that could be just due to the fact that you couldn't move. It's almost like you are in a coma, but you're completely conscious. You just can't do anything. So looking at that story, I'd definitely say it's more leaning to the side of sleep paralysis. The only thing is, like you said, uh, you mentioned your son. Uh, your six-year-old son has been experiencing a lot of things as well. So I don't want to write it off. But to me, that sounds like sleep paralysis. But I I could completely be wrong and uh, yeah I wish you all the best I hope it's sorted and I hope you don't experience that anything like that again maybe move the mirror I mean they always say it's bad luck what is it to have your bed facing the door or something like that it's like that old superstition like I always used to have my bed facing the door and I remember my nan came around one day and she was like ah, you must change your bed you can't have it facing the door like blah 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 I can't even remember what the actual what the, what the reasons actually were but for some reason that's a bad thing. Well, you learn something new every day, and I guess I'm educating you here. <laughs> so, we've probably got enough for another story. Yeah, this looks like a alright one. So this one's in Maryland, in the US. Maryland, Maryland? I don't know, just like I said before, Maryland, all I think of is cookies. <laughs> 
Now, I, I don't know if you get them in America, but Maryland are like the best cookies over here in the UK. And they are so good. <laughs> yeah, here we go. Spooky voice on. <laughs> <clears throat> I have this cross necklace that I've worn since my high school days. I started wearing this necklace when something happened to me almost every night at exactly 3am, where I'd wake up for no particular reason at all and I kind of get the feeling that I was being watched. It happened for three consecutive days and on the third day, I had a very bad dream. It was about Jesus Christ, but his face was changed into something sinister and scary. That got me scared so much I couldn't sleep well for days. To tell you the truth, those experiences may or may not be related when my friends and I practice witchcraft at a nearby seashore. We have this public place with a hotel and restaurant that is near the sea, and some parts of it are covered with tall grass and trees away from the main hotel itself. This is in the Philippines. Now ever since that we played around with witchcraft, I had these feelings of overwhelming negative energy all around me. I am sensitive to energies, especially around emotions and just the feeling of it. So that's the reason I got this cross necklace, which was blessed and given to me by a friend. Now this cross necklace of mine is weird, but it did help me to feel more secure and protected somehow. I have this mantra, or I keep praying inside my mind, that this cross necklace will stay with me and protect me if something bad was to ever happen. But if I am ever not worthy of it, like if I did something horrible, I will lose this necklace. Now. I don't know if it's that mindset that made a difference, but for the next few years I noticed that if I lose the necklace somewhere, it will always come back. For example, one time I was driving my mum off to her work at the hospital back in Maryland. I knew something was off because I immediately noticed I wasn't wearing my cross. I really thought I had misplaced it somewhere, so when I got back to the house I checked my room, my bed, everywhere, yet nothing. I went outside in our yard just in case maybe it fell out on our front lawn, but still nothing. I gave up and went back to my room and I was shocked that the cross necklace was there on top of my pillow, laying flat in the middle like it was neatly placed back there, and I just hadn't noticed. I don't mind how bizarre that is, but I am happy I got my cross necklace back. Another time I felt that the cross fell on the front lawn, it slid down my chest into the grass, it did really happen so I bent down and actually looked for it. You would think that you'd find it fast because you knew where it fell, but no. I searched and searched all over the lawn and even traced my steps back just to make sure that I didn't find it, just to make sure that I did find it. It was so weird and frustrating because I could have sworn it fell on the exact spot I was standing on that in that very lawn. I was disappointed not to find it but determined to look for it no matter what. It took me about 20 to 30 minutes searching all over the grass when I decided to go back to the house and to my room just to get away from the scorching heat of the sun. When I saw my cross necklace was placed on top of my pillow again, exactly like last time. That was weird, but again, I was just happy that I had found it. Now this next thing is the weirdest of all. The cross necklace I gave it to my boyfriend back then, and now my husband's back in 2013. I gave it to him because I knew the cross was special, and deep in my heart and mind, and it was really magical. I prayed to God that my boyfriend then would always be protected from harm, as long as he had that cross with him. I did make a vow that I would only give the necklace to someone special that I know I will spend my whole life with forever. Not to make it all che- <laughs> Not to make it all cheesy, he also has this necklace. I was in Maryland that time. I was either using Skype or some app that I can talk to him at the time. I told him that there is a typhoon coming that will hit our hometown, which means where he lives that time. Hit our hometown, which means where he lives that time? Okay. In the Philippines. He said yes, he knows about the place and they are staying in and not evacuating as opposed to what the officials are urging them to do in the first place. My husband's house is situated near the sea, so in about an hour when the super typhoon struck our hometown, I lost connection to him and I couldn't contact him, nothing at all. 24 hours passed and I got very worried. I remember I was on the computer at the time monitoring the news about the typhoon and about our place. There was this one news that televised right after the typhoon aftermath, and I distinctly remember as it was early morning around 5am on Maryland when the news was first able to air. I was shocked about the devastation and how severe it was, and I didn't anticipate the storm surge that washed away our hometown. Thousands died in the place where my husband lives, and it was hit the hardest because he lives right by the sea. I remember I cried and told my mum I'm going home to the Philippines. There were lots of bodies that had not been recovered, and although my chances are slim, I prayed to God that he was okay, that he and our family were okay. 
I remember I went to church the first time before my flight back to the Philippines and I prayed hard that everyone I knew and love is okay. Now right before my flight, I received an SMS message from one of my close friends in the Philippines that was somewhat connected to my husband's family. She said everyone was fine and alright, if only I can describe the feelings I had at the time. I was shocked, happy and grateful to God. Apparently they did stay in their house but they were able to survive the 6 to 7 foot storm surge that that went over Jesus. Yeah, this 6 to 7 foot storm surge that went over the roof. What was sad though was the ones who went to the evacuation centers especially on ground level died but my husband's family survived by staying in their house. If they went to the evacuation center something different might have happened. Now the cross necklace was with my husband but he said it fell into the waters. I was just glad he was okay though. Fast forward to a month or so, I was in the Philippines with my husband's family in the northern part. We were swimming on the swimming pool, and guess what? We found the necklace at the bottom of the swimming pool. The brother of my husband said he saw it and it looks familiar as it was around my husband's neck. How weird that we found it the same cross necklace a thousand miles from where it got lost on the water and debris during the typhoon and now in the swimming pool. My husband returned back the necklace to me when we got married in 2014 in Baltimore. We moved to Texas five years ago when I was stepping out from my work. I felt it fall down my chest onto the parking lot. I searched and searched and looked for it, but until I gave up. Until now, that necklace is still missing and I haven't seen it ever again. Something I remembered though about that necklace is that I once said that if I ever did something bad, I would lose that necklace. I don't know if I did something really horrible, but I just feel and hope that maybe it will show up like last time. Thank you for reading my long post. I just wanted to share something that is so special to me. Okay, so the necklace... I'm, all right, I'm just trying to comprehend this. So the necklace hasn't actually shown up this time. That's definitely, definitely a little cause for concern. Have you been naughty? What have you done? <laughs> But it seems fairly innocent enough. The the more shocking point of this story is that her husband and f her husband's family and all that were the ones who actually survived by staying in in their house when this huge storm surge of a wave like went over their roof. Right, that's ridiculous. And all the poor people who got evacuated, like they were meant to do, uh, they all died. Is it something paranormal, supernatural? There is it. The thought of prayer and good intent and good energy, of course, it's a disaster that all those innocent people died, but on the other hand, is it some kind of divine intervention? Like maybe this maybe this cross really is and not cut like the opposite of cursed is, is blessed or something like that. And it's really looking out for whoever possesses it. Maybe I mean a lot of things I've kind of gone over this before about how you put your own intent into something and how much you believe is how much like energy and how much it's going to manifest or something like that. If you really believe in something, it's going to be so much more powerful because you're putting your whole belief system, your, all your energy into it. Whereas if you just say a prayer and you're not a religious person or anything like that, it's, it's like you're kind of talking into the void. Whereas if you spent your whole life believing and trying to do all that and stuff like that, it's obviously... I d yeah, I, I don't really know what to say about that. It's it's definitely something interesting, and yeah, is is definitely a weird one. I'm glad your husband was okay and you're okay, and it seems like you've all settled down in Texas now. So it looks like you're living a nice, happy life. And who knows? Maybe the necklace might show up, or maybe something's happened. Who knows? Maybe maybe it's not you. Maybe your husband, possibly. Who knows? But. Yeah, I'd be interested to find out. There is a comment section, so I will keep checking here to see if there is any updates, which would be quite interesting. But yeah, we are going to finish this episode off. It's It's been a long one. Um, Yeah, it's definitely been a long one. We are currently about 50 minutes in, so I hope you guys really enjoyed it as always. It's been a pleasure. If you want to get in contact with the show, you know all our socials by now. We're That Haunted Show pretty much everywhere you can think of. Facebook forward slash that haunted show, Instagram that haunted show, Twitter that haunted show, our email that haunted show at gmail.com. Everywhere. <laughs> Luckily, yeah, that domain name hasn't been taken, so I kind of got it on every platform, which was really lucky. But again, uh, the podcast is doing really well. I'm in some serious talks, which hopefully I can divulge some more information in the future. Um, 
once it all kind of goes through i don't want to talk about it too much and possibly jinx it but who knows i am really excited though and i hope you guys are excited too because we're getting a lot of regular listeners now it seems like uh, with my analytics and stuff like that on the app i can actually see like regular listeners and stuff like that and who tunes in every time they kind of give you an estimated audience size of regular listeners and we're getting quite a few regular listeners now so that is amazing like i never thought we'd get regular listeners <laughs> i mean i thought people would probably hear it as a one-off and be like oh yeah that was a ride and never listen back again but yeah you guys are amazing and probably listening out so thank you again and honestly it, it's been great i love doing this show it's definitely something i look forward to every week i'm constantly coming up with new ideas and new types of phenomena um this is a uh, haunted item episode which is just reading out stories but i am next week uh, going to be taking like the original taking a deep dive i kind of want to do another cryptid i'm really tempted to do the mothman because as much as i wanted to do the wendigo i was really kind of excited to do the mothman and but sadly he lost the people spoke and you wanted the wendigo so and i mean the wendigo episode did do amazingly well so yeah hopefully you can give the mothman some love because he's a badass dude man he looks sick and i've been playing a lot of fallout recently uh fallout 76 because man i'm not even gonna get started about fallout 76 like i pre-ordered that i got the power armor helmet and everything like that i was so excited and of course the disaster when it came out it was an absolute mess and pretty much unplayable and i've just started playing it again and man they've really fixed it it's great i love it <laughs> and this is it i'm gonna round it off now like i said if you want to get in contact you know all the socials i'm gonna go oh if you want to donate or anything like that don't feel obliged but it will be greatly appreciated and it will all go to the show and for upgrading getting better equipment and everything like that and potentially going to this new spooky location because i am very excited to record that uh to, to donate if you want to just saying uh it is the pound sign that haunted show i don't know how to kind of use cash out it's not my, it's <laughs> like my first time using it or you can click the link in my bio and it will take you to that haunted shows page on buzzsprout and on the top right there is a donation section and stuff like that and that will link you directly if you wanted to do that if you do you're amazing if you don't you're amazing anyway so it makes no difference to me but again stay spooky stay safe and good night